while much of the other parts of the Florida Keys, starts to quiet down when the sun sets. Key West is just getting started. Known for its bars and active party atmosphere, and its famous sunset celebration each night. A place that is definitely on the bucket list of many travelers, worldwide. But Key West also over the years, has developed a fascinating history, that includes a darker side to it. It has a colorful history of shipwreck salvaging. A haunted doll and saloon. As well as some bizarre characters, over the years. In this video, we will take a look at some of the unusual. The strange and at times even bizarre, Key West. Known as the Trolley of the Doomed, the Ghosts and Gravestones Trolley Tour offers nightly adventures. With the ghost host and guide, taking you along the haunted streets of Key West sharing tragic tales and deadly love stories as you journey along to each location. The ride through the streets of Key West take about an hour and a half. A nice way to see some of the more famous haunts in Key West along with some entertaining and educational stories to better appreciate the places. For those looking for a family-friendly fun time, with haunted stories that add a dash of humor, the Ghosts and Gravestones Trolley Tour Adventure is worth a look. Through the brown curtains, you're in room number one. Robertson number five, he's midway through. But after Key West is well known for its many hauntings, and one of the most famous is of Robert the Doll. And this legendary doll has been haunting the citizens of Key West for over 100 years. The doll became the childhood possession of Eugene Otto in the early 1900s. He was given the doll at eight years of age and kept it through adulthood till his death in 1974. The young boy kept the doll wherever he went, and it wasn't long until people started noticing strange events that surrounded the doll. From overturned furniture to mutilated toys, as well as the parents often being awakened by young Otto screaming in his bed and finding the bedroom in a mess, with the doll overlooking the bed. In Mr. Otto's adulthood, people passing by his house would often claim they saw the doll moving from window to window, while others reported hearing strange giggles or laughs. People began avoiding the house as the stories grew over the years. It has also been said that those who have disrespected Robert, have often encountered months of mechanical problems, accidents, strange occurrences, and other misfortunes. Robert today resides safely enclosed in a glass case, at the Fort East Martella Museum. And it is strongly advised to ask permission when visiting the doll, before taking pictures.
Captain Tony's Saloon is considered one of the iconic bars of Key West. And arguably, also the oldest bar in the city. Its recent history is filled with colorful characters such as Ernest Hemingway, who used to often frequent the bar when it was called Sloppy Joe's. But the bar also has a darker history to it. Starting back to the time when it was first built, in 1853. Originally when it was built, Captain Tony's saloon served as an ice house, getting its supplies from ships that sailed down from the icy Atlantic. And because of the ice, the city decided this also would be the best place for its morgue. So before it became a saloon, it initially served two roles. As an ice house, and also as a morgue for the city. Then in 1865, tragedy struck. A hurricane swept through and devastated the city, and the morgue wasn't spared from its wrath. The walls of the building were destroyed, and about 10 bodies were washed away with the flood waters from the hurricane. So the history of the building has a grim, and macabre beginning. During renovations of the saloon in the 1980s, the workers unearthed bones that belonged to three people. And they also discovered a gravestone for a young girl named Elvira. The gravestone was surrounded by a wall of bottles, which are believed were filled with holy water and placed in the walls to protect the body from evil spirits. It remains to this day, located in the pool room at Captain Tony's. As you walk into the bar, you can see prominently on display, what is a lifeless and barren tree. This tree has a long and unusual history, and was here long before the building existed, which was later built around the tree. The tree was called the Hanging or Gallows Tree, and it's said at least 17 people were hung at this tree in the early history of Key West. Of the 17 people that we are told have been hung at the tree, one of them was a young married woman. As the story is often told, in a fit of rage and insanity, she murdered her two young children, and then her husband. She was immediately lynched by a mob that formed, while still wearing the blue dress she had on at the time she murdered her family, and with her victim's blood still on the dress. Many believe she was the first ghost to haunt Captain Tony's saloon. She has been seen many times and commonly now referred to as, the Lady in Blue. Up to about 1920, shipwrecking was considered the lifeblood of Key West. With the perilous barrier reef sitting off the coast, and the frequent hurricanes and tropical storms, the waters off Key West averaged about one shipwreck a week. And it's said the Keys in general, contains maybe as many as 1,000 shipwrecks. This made for profitable times, and Key West became one of the richest cities in the US. The Key West Shipwreck Museum, is a recreation of a 19th century warehouse, built by wrecker tycoon, Asa Tift. It combines actors, films and actual artifacts, to help bring to life the feel of what it must have been like, for wreckers back at the time. And besides the museum, which contains many artifacts from the 1856 wreck of the Isaac Allerton, 
It also has a 65-foot high wrecker tower. Used by salvaging crews to help monitor the sea, searching for any shipwreck as it occurred. The law at the time said the first to get to the wreck, was entitled to the largest share of whatever was salvaged. So watchful eyes were always looking out to sea. The Key West Cemetery was established in 1847. Soon after a severe hurricane had swept away the bodies at the previous cemetery, which had been located near the beach. So this place was picked due to its higher elevation, and not being close to the sea. One of the first things many visitors notice, is that most of the burials are above ground. And the thought of being so near to the deceased, may be a bit unnerving and eerie for some people. But it was done for practical reasons, since the soil is hard, and so is difficult to dig very deep. And also it helps protect against water from below, as Key West is just a few feet above sea level. The cemetery contains nearly 100,000 deceased, which means the dead outnumber the living in Key West, by about 4 to 1. And many have reported paranormal hotspots throughout the cemetery, making it a prime location for many ghost hunting enthusiasts. We have come to the memorial for the USS Battleship Maine. It was erected in 1900, and commemorates the 260 men who lost their lives, when the battleship blew up in the Havana Harbor in 1898. This is one of the more popular sites for people visiting the cemetery, And for many visitors, the fun and challenge is to browse among the many epitaphs, to spot some quirky and unusual final words of the deceased. And over the years, several have gained some notoriety. In the early 1930s, Key West made news for what many have described as a creepy love story. Carl Totzler, a German immigrant living in Key West, fell in love with Elena de Hoyos, a Cuban-American who was dying from tuberculosis. After she finally died, and refusing to accept her death, Totzler dug up her body from the Key West Cemetery and kept her in his home for years. During these years he filled her body with rags to maintain its shape, kept her skeleton intact with piano wire and coat hangers, and even used wax to repair parts of her decaying body. After what he did was discovered, Elena's body was finally placed back in the Key West Cemetery, where it remains to this day, in an unmarked grave. Just one more story that adds to the unusual, the strange, and the bizarre, Key West. <laughs> 